Yeah, so today I'm hosting my buddy, Louis uh, Zez. He's in town from all the way from Estonia. And I'm gonna show him some local things about this lovely town and the America, the real American way. And uh, we'll see his opinions on some of the CRTs that I have here uh, and the place that he's staying. But yeah, it's, a, it's gonna be an incredible time. So yeah, welcome. Kind of welcome to America, right? Yeah, I love it. I love seeing this. Uh, I've never been in such a place before. It's great. Like, it is a little bit like there's still some, I don't know, like surrealness. Like, oh wow, that's a middle school. Like yeah, even like, what? oh, that's a high school. Wow, I've never even seen one. What's the difference, like in schooling? Then I don't think there's necessarily like such a difference. It's just more like, mm, like. Okay, this sounds so stereotyped, but it's like what I see in the TV shows. Mm. What I see in a TV show describing middle America, this is it. And I've never actually just spent some time in, just in a community before. And uh, like people American doing regular community. things. Yeah, yeah, it's usually been like some big city or something like that or... So yeah, this is uh, very cool. We're, we're driving around. Yeah, we're about to go. So we're about to go to this restaurant that's been around forever. And we're gonna, um, it, it should have some interesting local cuisine here. So this restaurant is an old like dining car and it's been here for I don't know the exact history on it. Maybe I'll put that uh, here or something on the screen but it's been around forever and it's the place that my great-grandfather went and uh, so it's been around a long time. It is country as I'll get out right? <laughs> and I mean it looks like it's just a big solid like bar top one bar top and you just sit in there and there's gonna be like some real uh construction like style <laughs> you know good old boys good, well we're actually a little bit later they've always they'll keep getting True. that place <laughs> rolling but the good thing is everything's in here is gonna be fresh from like farms and stuff from around here all the food will be so uh, but it's an old place and uh it's not, there's not really much modern to it. I like it. Yesterday we went out, had a fresh pretzel, soft pretzel, cooked by a, I don't know, you can see, I don't know how to describe it, like a very, I don't know, traditional clothes, or you can see certain communities wear different clothes, had a little bonnet on the back there. Like, wow, like a, a person that I never would meet in, in regular life otherwise. So it was so cool. And uh, just so many little, bits of America, I don't know, the freedom, the little things the, that I love. Maybe if you live in America, or you live anywhere, you get a bit annoyed after a while, you're like, oh, with your own place, of course. Where this is all fresh and new, sunshine, some guys working on the street, good work, guys. This is kind of where like all the dodgy crackheads hang out up here for some reason. Off in the distance, we get a huge sign that says PAWN! P-A-W-N, by the way. Ah, Porn yeah, yeah. Emporium, Gadget Town. And that big, huge building off in the distance is like a feed plant okay. that makes, I think, dog food or cattle food. Or it looks like something out of like a dystopian novel. It just nightmare. kind of rises out of nowhere. Yeah, like no windows on it, nothing. And we're definitely not filming when we go in there. We okay. might take a picture or you sure. can pull your phone out, maybe make a little comment, but we will get like... I'm nope. afraid we might get stabbed. Nobody right. wants Instagram, YouTube influencers. <laughs> we look like some bar. serious douchebags. Yeah. Here it is, right here. Hey, let's come to Middle America. Look at these guys. Yeah, this is not going to work. <laughs> so, <laughs> Did you say here? This. So, yeah, here. So, okay. this, we're pulling up right here. Here's the dining car. We're going to park on the street. <laughs> All right, let's, we'll do a little bit out the front. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to park across the street here and then I'll, uh, I'll let Lewis hop out and look at it and we'll get a we'll get a photograph of it. But so what about the breakfast, huh? Scrapple. Okay, First I've never off, had let's the scrapple. talk about scrapple. I'll okay. tell you. So yeah, scrapple is like a mashup of leftover, gosh, mm. pig parts from a pig slaughter. Right. And then like boiling the bones down and you boil that stuff off forever, and then you mix it with like almost a cornmeal style mix. Okay. And it comes this big ploppy like porridge looking mm -hmm. thing, and then uh, that's allowed to solidify in a tray, and that's how it becomes that patty. 
and then after it solidifies and cools you take it slice it throw it on that flat skillet with some oil and, and griddle it like that almost like um, it's like thing. a hillbilly spam exactly it is it's <laughs> like the, this is a straight up like a Pennsylvania Dutch recipe from gosh hundreds of years ago that's, me, yeah. that's what there's the, the, so that the idea is actually a good one where it's a no waste like we're not mm. leaving any waste behind we're using the leftover scraps to make an edible food out of it and uh, I, I've always liked it personally I remember my grandmother like giving it to me growing up so I guess if you had it growing up I would imagine I tried it it was fine I could like take a bit I definitely a quiet taste let's say oh yeah definitely so but this is the the sausage and eggs you yeah. would have had would have been locally classic made and everything I'm sure that the sausage has a bit right. better flavor we already more. met we met some <laughs> uh, local personalities oh, everyone yeah, around yeah. he's got a person he's an old old couple and the first thing is uh, this dude knows he knows who Steve's father is like just start chatting He's like, oh well, yeah. no, no, my this is he actually knew like my the people from my grandfather's oh, generation. The grandfather, okay, dude. Like his brothers, and my great grandfather was the guy I was telling you that originally started going to LNS mm -hmm. when we before we went in. He so when this that's the name I told him was my great grandfather's name, and he said, oh yes, I'm familiar with them. They were the <laughs> stonemasons, right? And I said, yes, that's it. So, and then he asked me about someone that would have been like his son's age so uh, my grandfather's yeah. age but yeah an amazing huh and uh, this gentleman uh had a trump hat on and uh obviously got a lot of opinions and i said that i was a leadership instructor and uh that i help companies help teams get better and his first <laughs> response was you got to get down to washington and help them <laughs> and then his wife immediately turns to him with a slap <laughs> and says, don't you start, don't you start. <laughs> she got to keep him in check. So yeah, right, right. he was about to get the whole, oh my goodness, poor, uh, I don't know. It might've been funny to make Lewis I would happy to that. listen, I'd be very happy to listen. I'll listen in to your opinion, the, so. uh, Again, because I'm not this right. every day, right? So right. I'm. But that's, hey, that's, right. like I try to tell people, that's the beautiful thing about still, you can see in America. I think as long as people can go have a conversation and not be That's it, yeah. rude or hateful, these people were very nice uh, very to polite, us. Yeah. But it was uh, uh, that was a little unexpected, unexpected too, because it was also very. I thought it was funny that the restaurant was kind of open over on that side, mm -hmm. and they literally sat right beside us because right it's a us. countertop, like I said. And they sat right next to us to the point where the waitress asked if we were all together. together. Just, just a yeah, good old couple, right? Right, right. good people, good salt of the earth. So there you go, Lewis. You get to see we even had the more. The that, and like, I you, it. Yeah, I want to see everything. He's like, how'd you end up? How, they were like, how'd you guys end yeah. up here? And that's what I mentioned my grandfather, and they were like, oh, I said, yeah, he wanted to go somewhere local, and I was like, I couldn't think of anywhere more. And they're like, yeah, you can't get more local than this place. And even some things like I know you did it a bit, Steve, and I do. I know I do it. Well, you have to simplify the story a little bit. So I'm not all full on like I'm doing stand up comedy in Estonia and everything and the, all that. Like you know, you never said. You said the guy asked you what you do. You never said I repair TVs. You were like, I'm working on stuff. I'm doing things because maybe it gets too much. And I sort of said, I'm Australian. And then, as I realized in the story, I'd have to say, oh, I live in Europe. I don't think I ever used the word Estonia, right? Like, yeah, I was really vague where I just said, you know, you and I had businesses that right. we, like, worked together for our businesses and had, you know, met years ago through the internet and through our businesses kind of thing. And sure. to give them, because, I mean, I, yeah, at what point, I don't. <laughs> for me I'm like I don't there's sometimes I don't want to keep on going on start going in the conversation of me because what if a yeah. guy like wants to go into that rabbit hole and then we talk 10 more minutes about myself which I get to do plenty <laughs> but I don't need so I was like more interested in letting, right, in letting we want to hear them uh, yeah we want to hear that enjoy that and uh yeah but that was funny when his wife man she about she about grabbed her purse and smacked him <laughs> when he was one he was wanting to talk politics which I can appreciate. That's the funny thing is, um, what's the old, you know who's holding like the keys to the relationship. Yeah. For most yeah. of the relationships <laughs> in these areas, it's not those tough guys. <laughs> it's those ladies. They got the, they got the power. 
So where are we going now? Are we going back, Steve? Or yeah, hey, let's, uh, okay. We're getting close to where we may want to do, mm. get ready for our live show. Yeah, when, what time do you want to do the live stream? Anytime after 11 o'clock is fine. Sure. All right, well, we got through that uh, podcast pretty good. Pretty, pretty nice stuff. We had a good time, had a nice podcast. It was, yeah. it was a pleasure to sit down, talk with Steve, and actually, you know, here in person, not over the laggy <laughs> internet. So thanks, yeah. thanks, Steve, for hosting me. I appreciate being here. Oh, yeah, yeah, place. absolutely. Anytime. So let's, um, you know, before we get into too much stuff out on the rest of your trip, let's look around at some, uh, some items here in the shop. I'll walk you through it, and uh, we can... Kind of, I'll tell you some special things about each one of them. So um, let's just get up and uh, let's do it. Wander around here. Okay, we're going through okay. the bunker. Um, Steve's laid out a few items for us here. Okay, so this first thing we're gonna uh, look at over here are some tools that I have set up, and for the most part, one of the more important tools that you're gonna be uh, concerned with is stuff like this, right? Mm -hmm. 240p test suite. Classic, Here's yeah. some actual uh, hard copy versions of them. You know, you can download these for free, but you can also order this Dreamcast one is awesome. We've gone through it before, but it's mm. uh, it's a great one. And our Timio and everybody he has over there really does a lot. And these are so super helpful, obviously here in CRT land. And so you know, more tooling, more tools and stuff over here. Um, Another thing is like, you got to be able to kind of test tubes. So I've got some tube testers here now to look at. First off, look at this thing. I have really no idea what this is, <laughs> right? So this was a gift from Bob uh, and it just looks really cool. And I haven't even messed with it. So if anybody knows what exactly this precision apparatus does from the precision apparatus company of New York, it uh, looks like some kind of, ohms tester or something and anyway that's an item now this though is a tube tester right here this is the first one this is an old man this one's old this one's from i'm gonna say 70s maybe uh late 60s i can't find an exact data right here in front of us but anyway this is a 445 i have actually seen people use these on trinitrons and i've never done it uh, because for the longest time, people told me you could not use this one for uh, Trinitron working. And so I've never tried it. It's just, again, more of a relic here. The one that's probably the most important is going to be this next one, which is this 467 analyzer here. This is, so this is a BK467 CRT analyzer and restore. Now this tool, I had to go in and rebuild um, pretty much like 95% of the way. It is old too from the 70s and you have to make sure it's working. Uh, and it's, it was a pain in the neck, man. It, it like, I almost burned the shop up a couple times just, just trying to get it to work. It, it would, uh, something would short out and it'd sh throw a huge spark, start sending uh, fire flames, you know, from it. But uh, once you get it working, it's very important because it can tell you whether you have a short in your CRT tube, and if there is a short, sometimes it can be removed with this device. So look at these things right here, though. This is the biggest, the biggest hurdle when it comes down to uh, this machine is uh, none of them come with probably relevant adapters anymore. These are all homemade adapters. These are two right here, actually really nice. These will fit about 90% of the arcade tubes that are out there, about 90% of them will fit either one of these two adapters. And again, these were very nicely made, sent over to me from Dell by Delusional's Arcade. And then uh, outside of that, you have to use this, which is a universal mm. adapter, kind of. You, know, you pl plug all the probes on there. And so you have to do it that way, or you can make custom ones from old neck boards, which this is an example of that being done but that's not very efficient. Uh, basically, this is probably the most efficient way using these. And then you've got to, so you do that, you get this thing working, and this can tell you things that you can't tell about the tube without the tool. Uh, you can't tell if there's a short going on in it without this, really. I mean, you can guess, 
but this is going to give you an exact answer. And then even sometimes this can go in and repair things that are wrong with the tube that could not be repaired any other way. Mm. Uh, so in a CRT shop, this is like, you know, this is worth its gold once you get it to work. But it took me years to acquire something like this that worked. So that's the tools for testing. Uh, you know, that's a better example of some tools that are testing and important stuff. Now, next to that, I'll show you the rack of, you know, obviously I'm a Hacko fanboy, right? All Hacko stuff here, just about, except for my, this is a hot air station. This is, you know, your uh, exhaust fan to keep yourself from huffing all those lovely fumes, right? Uh, this is, I actually have two of these dual, dual guns right there. Uh, but this is the one I use the most. Uh, this is just an old backup Hacko. But yeah, obviously I have Hacko stuff. My other stuff's Hacko, most of it. And that's just a, uh, you know, you don't have to use that, obviously, but that's my favorite. And one of the other things uh, was uh, we've been talking about this year more has been the uh, estate auctions, okay? Mm -hmm. So estate auctions seem to be a place where you can get random old tech for decent idea deals and the next things that we'll look at real quick will be just a bunch of items that came from lots now this one i kind of feel like i got burned on because i got into like a bidding war on this lot of these old camcorders and i think people are trying to get nostalgic for these things so these are untested items i think i paid like 90 bucks for these both of them which was too much probably Anyway, uh, if it worked, it would be great, but of course it needs a lot of work. I can't, and I've never even worked on these, but this is a Sharp Jet Zoom, and it has the uh, full cassette tapes from the late 90s. Very cool looking, um, I mean, it looks awesome. It works halfway, but if you notice, look in here, uh, we've got like house screws right here <laughs> used, so yeah, right? This is an item that somebody's poked around in probably a hundred times to try to either fix or see what's going on. And so I've never even opened it. I haven't spent the time to do that, but it powers on kind of, uh, so there is life in it. But uh, the cool thing about this is if you look in, you can't see it now, but this has one of those, this will have a CRT tube in here in this viewfinder somewhere in there. I mean, you can't see it because it's, it's mirrored and it's not working, but that one and then next to that one is a little bit more modern Panasonic one and this one actually does work so you uh, at least I've got this one that works the the the, the battery uh, doesn't last and, and it doesn't hold a charge very long you have to pull it off the charger and then you can record for about 15 minutes but it has a screen here and takes like an SD card funny enough but it also does um, tapes and it won't open, but it does have a tiny tape, like a smaller tape cartridge there. And that's, you know, some of the more, that's more, that's more like me trying to think about ways to, you know, try to be, have some cool different stuff on the channel, but it's like, what the heck kind of can of worms did I open up? Those things, uh, I don't know that, um, I don't know, it's, it's like something you gotta really dedicate time to. Some of my favorite CRTs up here are ones that I have gotten from estate auctions. And it's just really, really old stuff for the most part. These are RF sets. Uh, this one had, thankfully has coax, but this is an old Montgomery Ward CRT. So it's, I want to say it's early 80s. Same thing with the Sony. I've done a full video on this one, this KV9400. All right, next to that, I've got this one, the KV1396R. And uh, this is another really cool set from that 80s era. And then finally, you know, probably, probably my favorite set I have in here altogether is the KTV. KTV. And it's, again, I like sets that have some kind of story to them or something. And what better story than to know that this was uh, in an actual jail cell with somebody. And so I bought this. I've talked about it a few times from Texas, the lovely state of Texas. It definitely was in a jail. It's got a marking here where that's the actual prisoner's number. 
His name was Hall, prisoner number 56902, <laughs> 9-8-2003. So this was etched and signed in. If you look back here, it's from 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's from 2002, coax only. I modified it and added, it didn't have a, spe a speaker at all originally because if you had a speaker in here, then you could make a lot of noise in your cell and it would piss off all your cellmates and you might start a fight. So you would only have the ability to use it with a hedge phones normally. Mm -hmm. So I added a speaker, uh, but I really like this one just because it's, it's an oddball and it's like to think that um, you could have somebody's jail cell TV. So that was a fun pickup. Um, we'll do a special sh quick shout out to this bad boy up here, right? Everybody loves the KV9 PT50, right? Is there one in here that you had a qu any questions about? Let me turn it around for a second. What, uh, after Steve's tour, I did my own tour, now I'm watching Steve's tour. The clear prison CRT looks way better in person. I've watched the videos, you've watched these videos, we've all seen this stuff. But to see the rear of it and how clear it is uh, through that plastic, it's very, very clear. It's not frosted or anything like that. Uh, it's meant to be seen. And I'm super, super impressed. If you had a lot of these new console sh shells that are coming out, Genesis, Super Nintendo, what an amazing pair it would be. Well, yeah, that is very true. And the, the reason is it had to be super clear so you could not hide any contraband back in there, you know? Like that was the deal. If you got your, uh, if you got an inspection from a guard, mm. they needed to be able to see inside there, you know, mm. to be able to make sure you weren't hiding anything. All right, so let's go here. We're gonna check out some uh, interesting stuff in my storage area, ah. which I have not been to in like four months. Who knows what's in there? So we'll see uh, down here and see what we can what we can unveil. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> uh, you know, this is actually less than I thought would be in here. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Liz? <laughs> Look at this. This is like an electronic store <laughs> from 1995. No, it's right a, here. yeah, terrible, so. You want this one? This is beautiful. Professional, yeah. beautiful, medical grade monitor there. Yeah, here you go. So I'll walk you through some of this stuff in here. So this is obviously I was an extra good. thing of bubble wrap. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, let's start here. Right here this is just an awesome, sharp Lenitron. Now this one does not power on, I remember, mm -hmm. but I did not have a heart to get rid of it or be time to fix it. So there's that. Just a, this is just a dual cassette. Sure. Um, now this thing is cool. Yeah. This one is a three color monitors, and this is the same exact tube that's in the five inch PVMs. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. But it's just three of them together. Now they only do composite video, mm -hmm. and there's no audio on them. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it it is color, and they mm -hmm. are the same tubes. So if you're desperate for parts for your five inch PVM, mm. you can actually snag a bunch of snag them from those. these. And these are actually not that expensive. Like, uh, I don't know, usually about 200 bucks. You can get that, which is less than you get triple parts. So. My, I have uh, a four, I have six, five or six of these five inch ones and they're in a rack. Like they're separate monitors, but they're yeah. in a rack like that. But I those think they're a little bit newer. That logo kind of gives it away. Right. The age and the vintage of those Trinitrons. Yeah. So, so look, we like this is the uh, this yep. is a 2030. But if you can you see like on this how there's a weird look. Mm -hmm. This has a freaking touchscreen overlay attached to this tube, Whoa. and that's what you're seeing there is the adhesive mm -hmm. stuff used to pe it's peeling off the glass. And uh, this whole set is, I think, pretty much dead, but it's parts mostly. But that's okay. that's what that looks like. Now, under is that, that touchscreen some sort of aftermarket? Yeah, thing? it What's was completely story? aftermarket installation. It's yeah. crazy. Like it was, uh, um, it had its own hardware installed on oh. the back end of mm -hmm. it, and it was actually like hardwired into the other boards where they would actually get power off a spot and and, and it was crazy. I couldn't mm -hmm. believe it was like a company that was doing all that back in 
the 90s and early or late 80s. Um, this is a what I found in the garbage. This is a like a 24 inch Dyna flat, and then um, funny enough, this is uh, the super flat. That's Samsung, I think. Samsung. Isn't it? Yeah. Looks like Look at this stuff. There's so much stuff down here. Okay. We so, have it done here. We got the. Olympus. Yeah, this is an Olympus. OEV202, that's uh, back stock that these, again, these are all mine. Uh, mm -hmm. But this one works. This one is a newer one. It does not work. I know that. This works. This works. Behind there is a 2030. Again, that one does work. Under it is a BVM. That's, that's the D series one, the mm -hmm. multi format. That one has a bad tube. It's got almost 200,000 hours on the tube. Oh, two. So 200,000 hours. Yeah, it looks awful. It like flashes nonstop colors. Okay. Now is that a little so, iMac? There's a little iMac down there yeah, there's as well. Yeah, a little iMac thing. There's a, this is an old RF black and white television. That's Magnavox. This works. It just looks terrible because the bezel's cracked on it. Mm. But it's the Sony PVM 1943 empty. Oh, excuse me. But that's just a. RGB monitor. That's a that's a bunch of parts, right? Uh, don't know that there's much. Oh, there's a BVM back there too. Oh yeah. That's an old one. It needs a full recap. Full cap, it says on there. Yeah, it yes. needs a full recap. It's got bad caps all in it. So that's at least three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Like 16, and there might be something else under there. I don't know. Let's see. Everything's hiding under here. That's just a bag. Duffel bag for no cash. Nothing. Yeah. No. Unfortunately, no cash in there. This is just a money pit now. Actually, now that I see this, I got ideas to put more CRTs in here because there's not. There's more space in here. You can go north. Yeah, you go. Because well, that's the only north. place I've got is to go up. That's pretty high. You can. And that's yeah. that's yeah. I need to put a rack in here and try to go higher because I don't want to put them higher on top of each other. Mm -hmm. But um, I would predict that these. So I'm not sure. I really like this Samsung Dynaflat, but it look at it. It's just. It's like I mean, a bit it looks like it looks like people were like hawking loogies on it, like of soda or something it's just nasty but i found both of those on the street actually my wife found them for me <laughs> so she said hey there's some of those tvs down the street <laughs> on trash day and i went and uh sure enough there they were and she's like yeah you gonna go get them so, uh, so i went and got them this was one that belonged to bob and he was he was like steve this is my dream tv and uh, so I got it working for him, and I was like, Bob, are you sure this is your dream TV? <laughs> and he said, yeah, I got to have it. And I said, well, it's black and white. And he said, oh, <laughs> can you sell it? <laughs> and I said, no, Bob, nobody wants a black and white TV. So here it is. It works now. Sure. So is it that old school styling, yeah, that real well, classic retro styling this, that attracted right, Bob to this? Everybody wants something. Everybody wants one of these like this in their collection mm. now, I think, right? I mean... This isn't oversized to the point. I, I think that that's what happens. You start getting some CRTs, and I know with Bob and his CRT wall, he's got to have. Um, he likes to have one for each thing. Like these are, if you have a color one, like if the sharp worked, uh, it would be nice. What um, that would be a nice one to have mm. to work for like Atari or something. Of course, I have so many look, that look like that now that we've seen before, but. That's one that I just haven't gotten rid of. It used to work, so that I know it's just an issue of something gone bad in there that I hadn't fixed. But yeah, this is, that's it. That's the full thing. So whenever I inevitably pass away and the payments stop, the this whole- is, this, this is what is, the children get. The, no, that's not, I was gonna say, this is what like the whole neighborhood can come down here and do a <laughs> auction over. <laughs> 
This is gonna be on an episode of Storage Wars yeah, storage in about 20 wars, years. Say, storage, storage Wars is coming down here. And say, I don't know what we found. We found a gold mine. Yeah, and Sorry. then he's gonna, it's junk. It's junk. Junk sets. Look at these old TVs. Nobody wants this. I shouldn't have paid two grand for this storage room. Yeah, I'm really surprised that um, I thought there was more in here. I must have taken something out of last time and never come back to fill it back up. So that's the thing. I need to get more CRTs, right? Always more. We can get more in here. All right. That's it. All right, so it's been a couple days now since I dropped Lewis off at the airport. I just want to say it was an absolute pleasure to host Lewis. I loved having him here, and it's really unbelievable to me that as a grown 40-year-old man, I'm still able to make these kind of connections in my life. I met Lewis completely online, and he kind of just reached out to me. Um, finding me asking me to do I think a podcast with him we really hit it off from that first podcast and then I asked him to do the cathode ray podcast with me which has been off and on going on now for years and uh, so if you want to see some more stuff from our adventure Lewis does have a couple more videos coming on his channel so do please check those out but again, thank you everybody for watching and getting a glimpse into just small town America and CRTs, a little bit more behind the scenes from what we do here and how um, amazing the world can sometimes be. And heck, we give the internet a lot of crap, but sometimes really great things can happen online. So that's my message to everybody. Thank you again for watching today. I'll see you next time with some more retro content. Yeah, getting ready. Ready to enter the Atlantic Union Bank Center, right? We're doing it. Oh, we're doing a video. Yeah. You should mention you're doing a video. We're all posing like fools. Yeah, okay, ready to enter. Here we go through yeah. security. Can we survive? Here we go. What do you think? Blizzards. Yeah. We are about, what's that say, 15 minutes to tip off here. Uh, halfway full. You ready, Lewis? Yeah, right? Hell yeah. I'm loving it. Wait, I've never been to a college basketball game before. Loads of kids. We're having a good time. It's massive. <laughs> right, wait, wait. Here, here. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thank you for bringing Let's do me. it. Four minutes. Let's do it.